from the Eucharist, our sanctification, by Father Rainiero Cantalamesa, preacher to the papal household. Saint Catherine of Siena, who had great love for the blood of Christ, wrote to her confessor, drown yourself in the blood of Christ crucified, bathe yourself in the blood, inebriate and satiate yourself with the blood, and clothe yourself in the blood. And if you are unfaithful, baptize yourself again in the blood. If the devil has blurred your mind's eye, cleanse your eyes with the blood. If you become ungrateful for unseen gifts, be grateful in the blood. Melt your lukewarmness in the heat of the blood, and in the light of the blood darkness will dissolve and you will be the spouse of truth. At a first reading of these impassioned words, the gentle Catherine might appear bloodthirsty. But if we substitute the love of Christ for the blood of Christ, all will be clear. However, we must beware of reducing the blood of Christ to a pure symbol, even if that symbol be the great reality of love. A symbol is something that suggests or recalls something else, a material reality standing for a spiritual reality. But Christ's blood is not just the symbol of a spiritual reality, his love and obedience. It stands for a precise event in time and space. Christ entered once for all into the holy place, taking his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Hebrews 9.12. It is this that gives it its unique and transcendent power. It is both a sign and a memorial. It does not just create a vertical relationship between a visible and an invisible reality, but also a historical, horizontal relationship between the present sign and the past event. It places us in direct contact, even if only sacramental, with the death of Christ. Christ's blood is like a glowing seal on the Bible, attesting that everything has been fulfilled.